Okay, let's learn something really neat about uh, the Fuji X Trans sensor that you will not be able to read anywhere. I've been meaning to make this video for some time. A lot of people get uh, ask me the question, why do the uh, Fuji files look so good, especially the JPEGs? For some reason, I'm not a JPEG shooter. I do shoot uh, RAW plus fine. Over on the left, we have a bear sensor, a conventional bear sensor. It's found in Nikon, Canon, Sony. On the right, we have an X trans sensor. You'll notice a different layout. If I actually scale it up, you will uh, see uh, this is the X trans sensor in a larger block. Um, right now, we're looking at a 9 by 9 block on uh, the bear on the left and the X-Trans sensor on the right. I'll provide the links for these so you can take a look at these uh, yourselves. Um, so what is about the Fuji is special? First let's talk about what you already know because this is stated everywhere. But there's also something special about the X-Trans sensor. The nature of light, the nature of capacitance of light from the far end of the spectrum to the other end of the spectrum. Blue light behaves radically different when it has to pass through a medium and also as it interacts with uh, silicon uh, than does red light. Uh, the two are completely different. I'm going to give you a really quick analogy in a second. So let's actually start out by talking about the two things that you probably do know about. You may not. Fuji X Trans Sensor, CMOS. Um, of course, we don't have an uh, anti aliasing filter or an optical low pass filter over the X Trans Sensor, which means it's sharper, which is a good thing. The layout of uh, the RGB, the red, green, blue, on the X Trans Sensor on the right here is different, such that it eliminates out much of the moiré issues. So it has better resistance to color moiré than the bear sensor on the left. Okay, we know that, so it doesn't have to have an anti-aliasing filter. That's really good. But we have bear arrays now that are high megapixel like the D810 that don't have optical low-pass filters or anti-aliasing filters. Um, you'll also read that it was stated that uh, the uh, x trans sensor was designed to uh, mimic the pattern grain of a traditional film. There is a little bit of truth to that, but I mean that's a little bit too much frou-frou from uh, Fujifilm itself. Uh, the truth of the matter is, like, why is the color saturation so good? And people said, why are these, um, you know, is there a bunch of uh, in-camera raw cooking going on? Because a lot of these Fuji lenses are high element count lenses. Okay, the nature of light, listen, every camera is absolutely no different than a radio, and every lens is absolutely 100% no different than an antenna. I'm a ham radio operator. Got a soldering gun over here, used to build radios. Not only do I know a lot about light, know a ton about lenses, I know a ton about cameras, all of these things combined um, actually give me a really special, unique insight into uh, how uh, sensors and cameras interact and the nature of a far end spectrum and near end spectrum light because blue light behaves radically different when it passes through a medium than does red light. Blue light is more energetic. This isn't my premise. This is a hardcore absolute fact. As you tar start to travel towards the blue end of the spectrum, it becomes so energetic that it becomes you know, very dangerous very quickly. People think towards the uh, infrared end of the spectrum, towards the red end of the spectrum, that is bad because that's where you get sunburns. This is true, but when you start traveling towards the blue end of the spectrum, and we don't have to worry about that from sunlight unless we go out into outer space or in special circumstances, then it gets not like... Your, your skin doesn't get damaged. I mean, your internal organs get damaged. Anyway, as far as the radio, and I'm going to get to the important secret about the X-Trans sensor that you'll never read about and why it's special in a very, very good way, is that you have to understand that, like, electromagnetism is electromagnetism. It doesn't matter whether it's my ham radio there in the back room or your cell phone, which operates in... Uh, 1.3 gigahertz. Uh, some of them still operate down in the uh, 800 megahertz range. Electromagnetic radiation is electromagnetic radiation is electromagnetic radiation. Your camera is no different than a radio, and your lens is no different than an antenna. Now, most people don't know about antennas, but antennas have a lot to do with signal attenuation. If you design an antenna with a certain geometry, it changes the gain of that antenna, like a Yagi antenna. You can actually point it in the sky. You can actually tell whoever is transmitting. You've seen them use that for animal trackers. They actually hold an antenna out, and they're like looking for some sort of rare animal that they tag with a radio transmitter. The way they're able to find them is using a directional Yagi antenna, Y-A-G-I. What the hell does this have to do with light? I'm getting to it very, very quickly here, okay? A lot of the things that have to be understood about the way uh, uh, sensors work and... Uh, 
the way lenses interact and uh, what's uh, so unique about the X-Trans sensor array, you have to explain, unfortunately, all this uh, boring stuff, which is boring to some people. Here's a large view of the X-Trans sensor array. You notice all the green there? Yeah, you, you notice all the green on the right on the X-Trans sensor, and you notice the disbursement of the green and the blue on uh, the left on the bare sensor. You notice that on the X-Trans sensor, there are, in the 9 by 9 there are 20 green, 8 blue, and 8 red. On the bare sensor on the left, we have 18 green, 9 blue, and 9 red. Why is this so important? Let's actually talk really quickly about the uh, Fovian sensor. Now, the Fovian sensor was uh, designed... Uh, uh, by Fovey, and it was bought up by uh, Sigma. And uh, it's really neat. Instead of actually arranging like a bear or X trans, they actually put the blue on the top, the green underneath that, and the red underneath. Silicon sensors actually, uh, their absorption is really high on the red and pretty crappy on the blue. That's one thing. It is also true that the nature of lenses is, especially in high element count lenses, is that the, the red light makes it through high element count lenses really good, whereas the blue gets attenuated, okay? Absorbed and attenuated. Every, this is a glass insulator. People think that glass is an insulator, and I talk about glass being a capacitor. They think, well, no, no, glass is not a capacitor. It's an insulator. It is actually both. The same thing with bismuth. This is the universe's most diamagnetic element on Earth in the entire universe, excuse me. And In other words, resistance to uh, magnetism. However, at the center of a gigantic thousand dollar monster magnet, what I have in the other room there, it is actually attracted towards the center of that. Every element on Earth uh, has both capacitance and resistance. Everything in the universe, as far as matter is concerned, and compounds, is capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. If you don't believe me, I'm sure you trust MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. You can bring up a YouTube video. Just type in the dissectable capacitor by MIT. Type in MIT, the dissectable capacitor. They will show you where the actual capacitance charge is not kept between the cathode and the anode, but is actually stored in the glass itself. This is also due to a lightning strike right here. Not a lightning strike, excuse me, but a power fluctuation on the line. This is an old glass insulator used on the old power lines. When the power would drop out and come back on again, it would actually cause the glass to explode. It's the same reason old non-microwave safe bowls would explode in the microwave. That doesn't happen anymore because basically all glass bowls are microwave safe. But they didn't blow up because of heat. They blew up because of the uh, uh, electromagnetic radiation in the microwave which caused the glass bowls to explode. What the hell does this have to do with the X-Trans sensor? I'm getting to that very quickly. It's unfortunate that I have to go through you know, uh, some of the, uh, the natures and properties of elements and of glass and how light interacts with it. Fuji has a specific advantage. I'll get to it very quickly here now. Uh, has a very specific advantage on their X-Trans sensor. The arrangement of this allows them to create uh, lens design with higher element counts now, the lens alone has excessive attenuation of high capacitance blue light. It's the same reason when you pass uh, white light through a prism, the blue light goes way the hell over here and the red light goes way the hell over here. Which, which gets, uh, which, uh, gets uh, spread out further, the blue light or the red light? It's the red light. The most perfect analogy that I can think of that I came up with, if you have runners, you got a fat runner like me that's really slow, and then you have like a Jamaican runner over here, right? Really fast guy, runs in the Olympics. And you place out a pit of tar, okay? We have to both run through a pit of tar. Glass is like that pit of tar. I'm red light. I'm fat and slow, right? I'm the red light. And I'm going to uh, have to pass through, say, uh, a five-foot patch of tar that is a couple inches thick. Now, I'm going to be slowed down, but I was going slow to begin with, okay? I don't have much power in my travel. The blue light, however, the Jamaican runner, this is the simplest analogy I could think of. The blue light, however, which is very energetic to begin with, its percentage of its attenuation, how much it gets slowed down as it runs through the tar, for example, is a lot more drastic than the red light. You have two things at work here. You have the actual, as I showed you uh, on the, uh, the attenuation of the silicon sensor, which is very sensitive to red light but not to blue light, but you also have the attenuation of blue light through glass. Its capacitance it's, is attenuated as it passes through more and more elements. What this means, and this is also the reason why the Fovian sensor is designed with the blue on the top, 
and not the blue on the bottom. It wants to get as much blue light as possible because before it hits that sensor, it's not only the uh, the uh, the uh, the, uh, the the color absorption of the silicone wafer. It doesn't matter if it's X-trans sensor or Bayer sensor or Fovean sensor. The reason that the blue is on the top is because it has to be because the Depending on the element count of the lens, there might be an excessive amount of blue light attenuation combined with the absorption of the actual uh, sensor itself. So the advantage is, I know it's taken me a long time to get here, the advantage, as I pointed out to you here, on a 9 by 9 with the uh, X-Trans sensor, we have 20 green, 8 blue, and 8 red. And on the left, we have a bear sensor, 18 green, 9 blue, and 9 red. It also happens to be the case that on the electromagnetic spectrum of visible light alone, that the green light sits right in the magic section where it's able to get plenty of the yellows and plenty of the orange and plenty of the uh, cyans and some of the blues, such that the extra count of blue, I mean, excuse me, the extra count of green receptors on the X trans sensor allows her to be better color saturation, better color rendition than there is on the bare array. People wonder why the colors are so vibrant. It is not in camera raw cooking. It's actually the nature of the X trans sensor. What this allows Fuji to do is to create uh, camera lenses which have in another camera using a bare sensor excessive attenuation of the blue light and cause these washed out images or just not color rich. People like even people that hate Fuji, they say the same why do the Fuji files look so much more color rich? And this is the reason why. It's it's ab absolutely uh, brilliant on the part of Fuji. Where also green, and very interestingly enough, the midpoint for blue sits at a ratio of 1, where green sits in the ratio of the midpoint of red to 5. sits at a ratio of 1 to 5. It literally sits at the golden section, <laughs> ironically enough, between the midpoint of blue receptors and the midpoint of red receptors. By having two extra receptors per 9 block, on the X-Trans sensor, which is right here, what we have is the ability for Fuji to create better lenses through the elimination of both chromatic aberration and vignetting a few more element counts or an extra ED lens or two, but have better color saturation native to the camera. Now, you've read these other things about the advantage of the X-Trans sensor, but you've never heard about or read this before, ever. This is Fuji's own creation. Fuji, you know, the, the experts at Fuji know damn well the fact that blue light is attenuated as it passes through excessive element lenses. I mean, this is irrefutable. Uh, it is also 100% irrefutable uh, that blue light attenuation through excessive glass is an absolute factor. Uh, the higher capacitance of blue light uh, through any medium, including glass, is irrefutable and undeniable. That's not my opinion or belief. I mean, it's a hardcore damn fact. So when you have uh, the attenuation and the, uh, the, uh, the, the susceptibility of red light versus uh, blue light in spectrum on the silicon wafer combined with, say, a high element count zoom lens or a high element count ultra wide lens, and this is the Fovian sensor on the right, but the Fovian sensor is owned by Sigma. That doesn't matter anymore. The silicon wafer technology is universal to bear X trans and Fovian sensors. It is, in other words, the point is, is there doesn't have to be as many red receptors on there. Red makes it through high element count lenses pretty damn good. You know, unless the lens is really bad, it's going to attenuate the hell out of everything. But red light zips right through the lens is no problem. Remember my analogy I just made of like me, the fat guy that's already running slow. I hit the tar, and I'm not really percentage-wise slowed down that much because I'm already fat and slow to begin with. Versus a Jamaican rusher runner who would be the green light or uh, the blue light specifically. The percentage of attenuation passing through that medium and the magnetic permeability and dielectric permittivity is radically different for blue and green in spectrum light. What that means is, in really simple layman terms, is that a high element count lens is an excessive sponge 
for blue and green light. So what is the answer to a high element count lens, which is very sharp, has low chromatic aberration, and low vignetting? What is the answer to that? The answer is the X trans sensor array. Also, in any 3x3 three three block, this is also, doesn't matter where you measure it at, in any 3x3 three three block, and this is an X trans sensor, a little bit larger one as I laid it out, you always have five green squares, always. So the answer to that blue-green attenuation through a lens is that you add a higher 3x3 three three block uh, photoreceptor for green light. Okay? It's always 5 on the uh, X-transit sensor. It doesn't matter where you place the 3x3 three three block on this 9x9 nine nine block. Just peck out any 3x3 three three block on the x trans sensor. You'll see what you have. Okay? Now, any... Um, any 3x3 uh, three three, uh, block right yeah any 3 yeah three any any 3x3 three three block you can have uh, four green and uh, in some cases five green like if you have uh, um, yeah blue at the four corners of the bear sensor you have uh, four uh, blocks uh, four photosites of uh, green receptors or it could be five if you have uh, no, it's it's always four. Excuse me. If you have four four red at the, at the four corners of a bear, you always have four green photoreceptors. If you have four blue at the corners, you always have four green. It's always four. Doesn't matter where it is on the X trans sensor array. And I actually blocked off uh, some things here with the gigantic uh, uh, black uh, squares. You can see it doesn't matter where you pick on the X trans sensor. You've always got five blocks of green. And the magic thing about green is like, well, that's green. What about blue? Well, here's the magic secret to that, is that where green sits on the uh, electromagnetic spectrum of visible light, of course, that's all you're recording, unless you have a converted camera, which is a full-spectrum camera, which we're not talking about here, we have the magic spot where green is plenty enough to capture a significant portion of blue light. Green receptors on a bare array or an X trans sensor array don't just receive green. They also receive yellow and a certain degree of orange. They measure that relative to adjacent photosites also to tell what color it is. That is obvious also. But their uh, receptability, their permittivity to uh, uh, the, the, green, uh, the green photoreceptors to a yellow light and orange light and near-spectrum red light and to cyan light and uh, near-spectrum blue light is rather massive. The spectrum for the photoreceptivity of the green receptor to that and able to judge it at, uh, compared to the adjacent to a photosite, which is how the image is interpolated, means that this is the magic of the X trans sensor, and you've never read about this before by anybody. Why, I have no idea. I mean, it's blatantly obvious. If you understand what light is, what lenses do, then you have to ask yourself, why did Fuji, in their infinite wisdom, and it's not just to remove the anti-aliasing filter, why did Fuji create a sensor with a 9x9 nine nine block region, which has two more... Um, green receptors than uh, a 9x9 nine nine block of the Bayer sensor. Why? And why does it have also one less receptor of red than the Bayer? The reason is very simple. Now you think, well, that's only two more green per 9x9 nine, per nine nine block area, but when you, when you actually uh, put that in the multiplicative, and this is just a really, really, really tiny section, all these squares, uh, over at a whole uh, APS-C uh, sensor, you're talking about an enormous amount of receptivity. And this is the reason for the awesome color saturation that people praise and love so much. And you've seen it here first, and you've uh, not read about it anywhere else, but Fuji just didn't happen to stumble upon this by accident. Why they've never written about it, I have no idea. I think some people actually know about that in the upper echelons of... Uh, uh, the photography manufacturing world, but uh, certainly nobody's written any articles about it. About it, and uh, so when you combine the nature of lenses and the nature of uh, light permeability of the uh, the silicon wafer, this is why the X trans sensor has that extra degree of magic, if you will, and why the uh, raw files and especially the JPEGs look so color rich. So vibrant. Everybody talks about, oh my god, the Fuji JPEGs are so vibrant and color saturated. Here's the reason why, girlfriend. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.